Ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to do another seven round mock draft. I actually am kind of cheating a little bit because I did a seven round mock draft prior to this for Packernet.com and I'm kind of just going to go ahead and use that and make a video out of it. But I do want to try to whenever I can um, because I, I can't do more than one first round uh, NFL mock draft once a week, but I want to try to get these uh, team mocks out whenever I get an opportunity. I very rarely have the house to myself, so I wanted to get this together as soon as I could. Um, but anyways, I want to run through the Packers, and then um, I don't know how I'm going to go from here. Well, whatever, we'll figure it out. But um, I don't really have a whole lot to say. I, if you look at Packernet in the article that I wrote, Kind of goes into a little bit more explanation as to my methodology here. It was a little bit different than what I'm going to be doing with these other teams just because I do Packers all day every day, and I wanted it to be a little bit more creative, so I sort of reverse engineered the um, the team and just tried to see what our biggest needs were and to be a little bit more need-based and then look at the board as opposed to what I usually do, which is to look at the board and then look at needs. But... Um, Anyways, uh, I, I want to just jump in here and um, just kind of, I guess, see how this goes. <laughs> so, and, and by the way, uh, this order, because I get scolded every single time, this is not the order. I know it takes me a long time to do these, and this was from like a week or two ago. So the order is going to be a little behind, but it, it was an order at some point, even if it's not. I don't see why that's a big reason to get upset about stuff. With a 12th pick in the first round of the 2019 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Noah Fant, tight end, Iowa. So I've never actually done this before. It doesn't feel like a Packers pick at all. They like to go defense, and they don't like to go tight end, even though Mike McCarthy is obsessed with them. He's gone now. Um, and Aaron Rodgers is always talking about the importance of tight end. They just never really prioritized it, and then when they went out and got somebody, they didn't know what to do with them. Jimmy Graham and Martellus Bennett and Lance Kendricks and Mercedes Lewis and on and on and on, Jared Cook, right? But I wanted to kind of do this pick, first of all, because it's just kind of how the board fell. But beyond that, everybody seems to recognize that Aaron Rodgers needs some help with the wide receivers or with receivers, and... With this pick, he gets a new receiver, but we also get to continue to mold and work with our younger wide receivers, Marquez Valdez, Scantling, Equinemia St. Brown, um, whoever else is still on the team at that point. So he gets a weapon, and we don't have to really mess with the wide receiver room too much. Um, beyond that, Noah Fant, just an absolute athletic freak. If you don't know who he is, I would play some videos on here, but then... Um, the people who stole the content and reworked it and made a video out of it are going to get mad that I steal their content and make a video out of it, and they're going to want the money because apparently that's how the universe works. But um, absolute athletic freak, and if you know, if we can assume Aaron Rodgers gets back on track and we get a new head coach that a lot of people think is going to be very offensive-minded, going to be a little bit more modern, we get this more modern tight end. I don't know, man. It could look pretty cool. So... Doesn't feel like a Packers pick, and I know a lot of people want a lot of different things, but we're going to go with this. Noah Fant, tight end out of Iowa. With the 30th pick in the first round of the 2019 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Zach Allen, edge rusher, out of Boston College. So I always like to say that I see him as the exact opposite of Harold Landry out of Boston College last year. Harold Landry was a guy that was very, very small, and I looked at him and I said, he's too small, he can't set an edge. He actually did pretty good at setting an edge, at least, I don't know what he's doing in the NFL, but in college I was pretty impressed with what he was able to do considering his size. Zach Allen is a gigantic meatball. He's, uh, let's see, I got it set up here, Six foot five, 285 pounds, so very, very big guy, and if you watch him play, it's like, oh, this guy's... He's obviously going to be able to set an edge, but he's never going to be able to get around the corner. Well, he does. He does a pretty good job as a pass rusher. Some questions about his athleticism as far as like higher level stuff. Like he can he can get to the quarterback, but does he have the bend and flexibility and those kinds of things as an edge rusher? I don't really know. But at pick 30, I'm very very happy to get a guy like Zach Allen. We'd absolutely need him on the team. We need edge rushers. We need a lot of help. Um, I think most Packer fans are are uh, convinced that the first pick has to be a pack or a an edge rusher but I think as long as we get out of the first round 
addressing that issue, um, you know, it's we'll, we'll call it a win. With the 45th pick in the second round of the 2019 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Taylor Rapp, free safety, out of Washington. So, it, you know, I think most fans were content getting rid of Ha Ha Clinton Dix. They were very, very upset, a lot more than I was. Um, he definitely had a lot of flaws, but I think as far as his ability to cover, I kind of liked him. But it made sense. Uh, the production wasn't there. The The effort, I think, was the biggest issue. He just played like he didn't care. And with a contract coming up, I think Gutekunst just kind of looked at it and said, nah, enough is enough. So that made sense. Uh, the biggest problem, however, is we didn't have a lot of bodies as it was. We moved Tremont Williams from cornerback to safety. Most Packer fans thought that that was just going to be the greatest thing ever. He's going to be the greatest safety ever, and he's not. He's not very good at it. So we absolutely have to address the safety um, position, and there are not a lot of safeties available. Taylor Rapp is one of the better ones, however. He's actually kind of the anti-haha, at least as far as his write-up goes. Um, you look at what people have to say about him. Very sure tackler. Takes great angles. Anti ha ha Clinton Dix. Some concern about his range. Obviously, everybody in the NFL wants that safety that can go sideline to sideline. It's going to be really hard to find him. Even even Deontay Thompson in the first round. There's questions about does he have that kind of range? You know, because his 40 time is not super fast. Even though that's not necessarily the biggest indication of what is going to get you sideline to sideline, but. It's hard to find that guy. There's there's one Earl Thomas, right? <laughs> it's, that's pretty much everybody wants Earl Thomas. Best of luck, right? W- one team's going to get him every three years. That's that's just the way that goes. So, but either way, Taylor Rapp is a very good free safety, and I think it would be a pretty good hit for the Green Bay Packers. With the 76th pick in the third round of the 2019 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Ross. Pierschbacher, offensive guard, Alabama. So really, really big Alabama guy, similar to the Wisconsin guys, right? These are typically going to be a little bit more road graders, six foot three, uh, 304 pounds. He is going to be a right guard. There's no question about it. Lane Taylor, I wouldn't mind upgrading a little bit, but we, we need we need somebody, anybody else on the right side of the offensive line at guard. It is a massive need. And I think if you're talking the, the strong side of the offensive line, as much as he's not a great pass blocker, he's going to be heads and tails better than anybody we have. And beyond that, I, I wouldn't I don't have any objection to getting bigger and stronger at guard and, and uh, along the offensive line and, you know, as a team to start being a little more power and a little bit less finesse. I don't know if that's the way it's going to go, but I really like our running back. I, I like our running backs. Uh, Aaron Jones, I think, has been very, very impressive considering the lack of offensive line help. As good a pass blockers as they are, they're really, really not very good run blocking uh, as an offensive line unit. I think Ross Pierschbacher at least has the ability to be one of the guys that, that, that can really spring Aaron Jones. And it doesn't take much. Just just give him a little bit of a crease, and he can get to that next level and, and turn one little cut into 10 yards. So I, I would love to get a guy. And I, I don't really want to go too much later than the third round. I know I know you can find guards a little bit later, but I really want to find a quality player. And I'm tired of taking stabs at you know fifth, sixth round guys and just seeing what sticks, even though maybe I'll do that in a little bit, but <laughs> we, we, listen, the Packers have had really good teams, and if you look at the really good Packers teams, a lot of times they had really good offensive lines, of course they had a really good quarterback, because that just goes without saying, but David Bakhtiari, Josh Sitton, um, you know, back when we had TJ Lang and Brian Balaga and, and Corey Lindsley at center, that's a really good offensive line, really good unit, and I, I Listen, as I've said before, the offense is nothing but running and passing. You can't do either of those things without an offensive line. So anyways, I say that all the time, but it just, it, it, and I think it's just because it's not a sexy pick. Everyone's like, no, oh, offensive line. No, I want wide receivers. Give me that one guy who runs a 4-3-2. I want that guy. I want him to go run down the field and make really awesome highlight plays. You got to be blocking, man. A-B-B, always be blocking. All right. When did I get so boring? I want blockers. I want more blockers. Where are we? Yeah. With the 109th pick in the fourth round of the 2019 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Anthony Ratliff Williams, wide receiver, North Carolina. So there was actually two wide receivers I was torn between, 
Ratliff Williams was the later of the two. Um, he is, you know, first of all, he's six foot one, two oh five, so he's not. I, I just heard recently that we picked up uh, Alan Lazard, Lazard, whatever his name is, six foot six, to go with our six foot five. Um, what? Which one's which? I'm trying to think here. Um, Equinemius is six five. I think Marquez is six four. Uh, Jamon Moore is six foot three. We've got Jimmy Graham, who's six foot six. At some point, we decided we wanted to be the Washington Redskins and get really tall, really fast guys. I mean, it's cool, but you you gotta just get good wide receivers. So let's just find the six foot one, two oh five guy that's pretty good at just playing football and see what he can do. Um, beyond that, again, yes, we do need to get some some more talent. We need some more competition. Marquez showed a flash but he kind of fell off. Equinemius has shown flashes, kind of fell off. How much of that is the, the chemistry and how much of that is Rodgers? We saw Rodgers miss passes to EQ and Marquez last week um, at the in the Bears game. Either way, Jamon Moore isn't really stepping up. Let's just get another body in there. Let's get another body in there and see if he can really step up. But the biggest reason I chose Anthony Ratliff Williams over Stanley Morgan, who is the other wide receiver I was considering, is that he is also a really good kick returner. Special teams needs to improve, and beyond that, as much as I appreciate Trevor Davis, it's really, really, really time to move on. How long are we going to keep this guy on our team who's just going to be a punt returner slash kick returner who he's he's never going to be a wide receiver. Um, he, he fumbles a little bit too much, and um, you know he's, he's got a bit of an injury issue. I, I just I think we need to just find a replacement, even though we probably aren't going to find somebody quite as electrifying and good as Trevor Davis on special teams. I wouldn't mind finding the next replacement for him. Moving on with the 111th pick in the fourth round. We do have two fourth round picks, thanks to Mr. Haha. In the fourth round of the 2019 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Levanta Taylor, cornerback, Florida State. So a lot of people probably thinking, why are you taking corner? When I reverse engineered things and I said, okay, I just want starters. I don't want everybody. I want, you know, guys that you can call starters. And I did it in reverse order. I had three cornerbacks on my list of starters. You got your number one, number two, and number three. Same with wide receiver. Cornerback three, which was Kevin King, was the absolute worst graded starter using pro football focus of anybody. Of anybody. I know a lot of people like Kevin King. We've seen some flashes. Obviously, he can jump really high and he swats balls away if we're talking getting down the field. But we have Jair, who's pretty good. Breland, maybe. Josh Jackson looked pretty terrible. Kevin King does not look good when he can be healthy and on the field. I'm just saying, a later round guy, whatever. But if we're going to do it, let's look for a guy like Levanta Taylor. He is... Right quickly, five foot ten, 181. Why is he this late? Because he's five foot ten and 181 pounds. But Pro Football Focus has him as one of their highest guys coming out of uh, high school. He was one of the highest recruited guys out of high school at the cornerback position. Unbelievably talented. Very good chance he gets drafted higher than the fourth round. But at this point, that's where he is on the board. Um, I would look him up, but that's just going to take too much time. And this is this is going live. I don't have time to do all that nonsense. But um, I, I think he's sort of the high upside kind of player. If, if we're going to do it, let's go high upside. I don't want just another body so that we go, I don't know, between Breland and King and Jackson and Taylor. And it's just kind of floating out there. I don't know. Pick one. Either he's going to be really good or he's going to be trash and we get rid of him. Let's just go with that guy. So that is the methodology on that one. Moving along with the 100. And 40th pick in the fifth round of the 2019 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Prince Tega Wanogo. Um, Absolute monster tackle. I know I just said I don't really like going late, especially tackle. You know, guards kind of drift a little bit. Centers kind of drift a little bit. Tackles, if you're not gone in the first round or two, you're probably not expect. You know that once you get to like the third round, you read all their scouting reports, and it's he's probably going to be a better guard. (laughs) <laughs> because he's got flat feet or because he has short arms or whatever it is, not super athletic. Um, 
But six foot seven, three hundred and seven pounds. I don't exactly know what the situation is going to be with Brian Balaga. Everyone thinks it's a foregone conclusion that he's going to be gone after this year. It's not. We do have him locked up for one more year. He is still a very good tackle. I know he's hurt a lot, but I don't really care. Let the man play. We need a right tackle. I don't want it to be Spriggs. Probably a good chance we don't want it to be Mr. Wanogo. Um, I'm sorry I didn't take one earlier, but you can only take one pick uh, for each pick, if that makes sense to you. It should, because it's pretty straightforward. But um, it, it's, it's a big need, and uh, you know I wouldn't be surprised if we address it a little bit earlier. But at this particular point in time, I would rather keep him, look very hard in free agency. If there's a free agent available, very strongly consider pulling the trigger on that. Otherwise, you know, I'm looking by at least mid-round, I want to get a tackle. And this is about as late as I'm going to want to go. I don't expect much from a fifth-round tackle, but David Bakhtiari was a fourth-round tackle. He's one of the best, if not the best, left tackles in the NFL. So either way, very little chance he's much worse than Spriggs. We'll leave it at that. With the 173rd pick... In the sixth round of the 2019 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Jordan Brailford, edge rusher, Oklahoma State. So he is six foot three, 250 pounds. I don't expect him to necessarily start right out of the gate, um, but who knows? A lot of that is going to depend on if Nick Perry even comes back. I kind of thought that was a foregone conclusion that he'd be back, but I don't know that it is. If you look at his contract and the way that it's structured beyond the June 1st deadline, um, there's a real good chance that we could, well, there's a good chance he might not stay because of the amount of money we would we would be saving. However, Nick Perry has a b- real big high upside. And if you look at his abilities in a contract year, and especially since we have to keep him after June 1st anyways, it would make sense to at least bring him into the preseason see how he's doing, see if he's progressing, see if he feels like being a first-round draft pick type guy like he was in, what was it, 2016 or whatever, or if he wants to play like he did this year where he was literally one of the worst edge rushers in the NFL. Maybe just kind of feel it out. But either way, um, you know, we've got Perry, we've got Allen, we've got Fackrell. um, Clay is almost assuredly going to be gone, and now we got Jordan Brailford that we can get mixed in here. Uh, Again, six-round edge rusher. Hopefully you get some production, but once we get into the 5th, 6th, 7th round, it's kind of, I don't expect much out of the gate, but we do need some more bodies, and we do need some more potential production, and we need some more rotation, and because of the lack of talent that we have, I don't even want to say behind anyone. I mean, hopefully behind Zach Allen, hopefully he pans. I don't know anybody. Fackrell had a decent year, if you, you know, forget the fact that almost all his sacks came in two games, he, he was all right, but... um. Jordan Brailford has a good opportunity to come in here and basically start. Let's just say that. With the 185th pick in the sixth round of the 2019 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Delvin Randall, strong safety out of Temple. So, yes, we are going to be drafting a safety with the last name of of Randall. No, we're not going to convert him to cornerback. We're not going that route. We went down that road once before. Um... Mr. Delvin Randall is five foot eleven, two hundred and ten pounds, and um, it, it, it's again kind of just addressing the safety issues that we have. I really do like Josh Jones. I like that he is very, I mean, super athletic, really strong, really fast, flying around the field, very physical, very aggressive, very mean, very high energy. Just it's not clicking. And um, if if nothing else, we're going to need somebody to back people up. I still want the depth. Even if Josh Jones really blossoms into something special, I still like the pick because we still need the depth. If Josh Jones doesn't pan out very much, Delvin Randall has an opportunity to start for the Green Bay Packers. So either way is what it is. Finally, finally, with the... 204th pick in the seventh round of the 2019 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Travis Homer, running back, Miami. So here's my thought with the running backs for the Green Bay Packers. Obviously, with Ty Montgomery gone, we basically have two. We have Aaron Jones, who seems to be having some issues with injuries, although he's a very good player. We have, um, uh, you know the other guy. Why can't I think of what his name is? Bigger, stronger. I feel really terrible. Hold on. I got it right here. Eh, where's the article? 
Running back, Jamal Williams, thank you very much. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Yeah, I do this all the time. I know all about the Packers. I do a daily Packers podcast. I don't even know the guy's name. Five foot eleven, 195 pounds is our guy, Mr. Travis Homer. Anyways, what I like about it is if you look at Brian Gutekunst and the way the Packers like to do it, they like one guy. That guy is five foot eleven. He's about 225 pounds. He's smaller. He's a bigger bowling ball type. Why it is they like those guys, I don't know, but they've literally signed about 11 of them. They sign them, put them on the practice squad, get rid of them to sign a new guy. He's 5'11", 225. Get rid of him, sign a new guy. He's 5'11". I don't know why they're doing that. Here's what I would like, especially, again, we got this newer, more athletic, more modern offense going on. I want a guy who is... Um, trying to think. I'm blanking on people's names again. It's been a long day. It's the end of the day. This is why I do things in the morning. Um, oh, that's going to drive me insane. All right, fine. Amir Abdullah. There. Duke Johnson is what I was trying to think of. Duke Johnson, Amir Abdullah, whatever. Smaller, shiftier receiving backs. I'm not asking you to be an every down running back. We've got Aaron Jones. He's our slasher. He's going to be our almost every down back. He's going to be carrying the primary load. Jamal Williams is the bigger, meatier back bruiser type. He's going to wear you down in the fourth quarter. We're going to use him on short yardage situations and goal line situations. This is going to be our receiving back. He's going to be the guy that the Packers never really utilized, the guy that Ty Montgomery was supposed to be that never really became. He's going to be the smaller guy. He's going to be the guy that you get in space in in those kinds of situations. He's going to be the guy that if you do use him between the tackles, he's the kind of guy that can break one from anywhere. Real high speed, smaller, shiftier type. That's what I would like, and I like, and th- this is, I think the last pick that I'm really excited about that could actually start, man, I don't know, Ross Pierschbacher maybe? I like this. Not that he's going to get a ton of snaps because he's still third on the depth chart, but he has a role. He's not just number three, like, waiting down here. He has a specific role used in specific packages. He is going to be used. He is going to stress defenses. He is going to be a challenge and a ma- mismatch nightmare, and now we got Noah Fant, and we got all these different things going on. Suddenly it's not, you know, 1976 Packers offense anymore with Mike McCarthy at the helm. We got some more kind of dynamic stuff going on with some more fast, elusive guys that can do different things like Noah Fant and Travis Homer, as well as the six foot four, you know, four three nine running uh, Marquez Valdez Scantling and everything else. Something to be excited about. So... Also, because I did an article, let me just run through this real quick. This is the new official depth chart as I see it. Quarterback Aaron Rodgers, wide receivers. we got Devontae Adams. On the opposite side, we have Anthony Ratliff-Williams. Yes, I have him taking that spot. Could be Marquez, probably Marquez. Anthony Ratliff-Williams. I hate saying the whole name. Anthony is probably not going to be out there week one, but ideally... Again, because he's just a better football player. He's not like a gimmicky kind of, you know, super tall and fast. He's going to be that guy. And then I put Equinemius in the slot. Not because I think he's better than Marquez. I just think he's more suited to be a slot receiver anyways. Left tackle, David Bakhtiari, Lane Taylor, Corey Lindsley, Ross Pierschbacher. Thank you, heavens. Right tackle, Brian Balaga. We're going to keep him one more year. Backing him up is going to be Prince Dega. Tega Wanogo. Our tight ends, I don't exactly know. Noah Fant is obviously going to be there. Jimmy Graham, good chance he's gone. I think he's another uh, post-June 1st guy that's probably going to be gone after that just because the amount of money we save and the lack of production. I don't know, whatever. Either way, Noah Fant's going to be the guy. Running backs, Aaron Jones, Jamal Williams, Travis Homer is our number three, as I explained. Defensive line, Mike Daniels, Kenny Clark, Dean Lowry. Outside linebackers, Nick Perry and Zach Allen, maybe. Backing up Nick Perry, Jordan Brailford. Our, I think, sixth-round pick inside is Blake and Jake, as usual. Our corners are going to be uh, Jair Alexander and Bashad Breland. Kevin King is going to come out in the three wide sets as an uh, outside guy with Jair in the slot. Backing them up is going to be Levanta Taylor. I don't know if it's Levante, maybe. Nobody knows these things. And then finally, our uh, almost finally, free safety Taylor Rapp, strong safety Josh Jones. Backing him up is Delvin Randall. Then we got our punter, J.K. Scott, kicker, Mason Crosby, Hunter Bradley, and then our punt returner is going to be Jair, kick returner is going to be Anthony Ratliff-Williams. This is, ladies and gentlemen, your 2019 Green Bay Packers. Thank you all for tuning in. Enjoy some, uh, what do we got? We got a bowl game going on. I don't want to talk about it right now, but anyways, enjoy it. We'll be doing this more often. Going to do, I think I want to do an AFC North team next.
I don't know. We'll see what happens. Enjoy it. Have a good one. Bye-bye.